baik. Jadi kalau kita lihat anak itu kita hormat gitu ya. Bahwa anak ini luar biasa dia akan mengajarkan kepada kita, akan menunjukkan kepada kita seperti apakah dia cara belajarnya, ya. Tapi apakah kita siap atau tidak? Ya, dengan uh, dunia yang uh, dengan uh, apa? masyarakat yang modern yang berputar begitu cepat dalam segala sesuatunya. Kita siap apa enggak untuk bersabar melihat mereka bekerja. Mungkin pada jam makan siang atau pada pada saat harusnya saat mandi seperti yang tadi saya katakan. Oke, okay? apakah kita siap apa tidak? Nah, kalau setiap orang yang ada dalam ruangan ini siap, saya siap membantu mereka supaya mereka itu melalui sensitive experience-nya, ya. Kemudian apakah bisa kita menyampaikan hal ini kepada orang lain yang baru akan kita ketemui nanti, ya? Atau orang-orang yang sekarang ada dalam pikiran kita si Anus harusnya tahu, gitu. tapi bagaimana cara uh, menyampaikannya? Uh, hal yang paling sulit, ya, uh, sejujurnya, ya, adalah menyampaikan kepada orang tua, ya, kepada orang tua anak-anak kita di sekolah, uh, apa yang menjadi hal yang utama, gitu ya? Karena kalau kita cuma bilang di rumah gimana mereka diperlakukan dengan Montessori apa tidak? Oh ya sudah, begitu ya seringkali jawabannya kayak gitu ya. Tapi sejauh mana kita bisa mengecek ya? Lalu di sekolah anak itu tantrum misalnya, ya kita udah tahu deh, ya itu belum melalui masa normalisasinya, tidak disediakan uh, ya materialnya atau tidak diizinkan untuk uh, melalui masa uh, masa sensitif experience itu sebagaimana harusnya, gitu ya. Jadi saya berharap ya. Mungkin objektifnya adalah kita sekali lagi kayak tadi ya di pertama pengetahuannya atau diingatkan kembali tentang sensitive periods ya kemudian pulang dari sini memiliki suatu tekad tertentu untuk menyebarkan hal ini kepada siapa aja yang ada di lingkungan kita kalau kita ibu rumah tangga dimulai dengan diri kita sendiri ya mau nggak kita memberi waktu kepada anak kita itu untuk berkembang sesuai dengan kecepatannya dia memberikan dia waktu untuk berkonsentrasi pada saat sensitive periodsnya oke okay, ya. Uh, yang hal lain lagi adalah bagaimana caranya berbicara dengan orang tua ya sekarang ini kalau saya memberikan nasihat kepada guru-guru uh, di sekolah kami gitu ya karena masanya sering datang dari uh, dari orang tua bukan masalah mereka salah ya tetapi pemahaman yang masih keliru atau tidak cukup waktu untuk mempelajari dan bersungguh-sungguh agar anak-anaknya itu bisa berkembang uh, padahal anaknya di, ada di sekolah makasih makasih gitu ya jadi adalah uh, bagaimana bicaranya dengan mereka Saya katakan, Miss, tidak bisa lagi kita bilang Mem, uh, Mam, tolong di rumah itu disediakan Ini uh, misalnya mereka harus diikuti cara belajar itu Udah tidak bisa seperti itu lagi Tapi uh, harus bukan berhadapan lagi Tetapi bersisian gitu Ya, sebagai sama-sama partner yang untuk membesarkan anak-anak ini Gitu ya Oke, okay, baiklah sebelum uh, disampaikan lebih lanjut Kita akan melihat dulu ya Apa yang dilakukan uh, Bapak Ibu bisa bersabar tidak ya Melihat apa yang dilakukan oleh anak ini Karena rasanya kita mau, mau oh, buang-buang waktu, kamu ngapain sih gitu ya uh, Sini saya bantuin aja, sini saya selesai Sering kali kita begitu ya Tapi kita datang dengan uh, uh, dengan mindset yang berbeda sekarang ya kita lihat.
sebelum saya lupa ada satu hal ya um, uh, Bapak Ibu mungkin ketika belajar tentang sensitive periods ya mendapatkan dari satu institusi misalnya ya tapi uh, Bapak Ibu juga kita semua menyadari ya bahwa ada banyak institusi di, di dunia ini ya uh, banyak itu artinya lebih dari dua gitu ya yang uh, mengajarkan tentang berbagai metode Montessori ya kita tidak pernah mau menganggap yang mana lebih benar atau lebih penting atau seperti itu yaitu yang jangan dilupakan karena itu kita selalu kembali kepada uh, Maria Montessori punya uh, handbook ya jadi ada own handbook siapa yang pernah melihat Maria Montessori own handbook? No ultimate goal here, okay? When you go to school, normally they tell you the ultimate goal is that you know you have to teach the children ideas. It's your responsibility to to give them all the information they need. Make sure that they leave the classroom with the correct academics. Okay. But what you're doing here is that you are here to serve the child. You are here to light this flame of excitement for learning and knowledge. Right? Can you do that when you're growing up? Did anybody like that flame? Did you? When you were in school? <laughs> Tell me, uh, do, uh, how many of you have uh, a favorite best teacher? Uh, hands, very high. For those of you who had a best teacher growing up, give me a yeah. 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 Okay. How many of you uh, had more than one yes. best teacher? Give me a loud idea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> how many of you had a worst teacher? <laughs> we have to pay okay, best teachers, worst teachers, okay, which one is heavier? The worst? Best. More best teachers? You have more best teachers than worst ones? Okay. Anybody else? More. Yeah, did you have more than one worst teacher? Then you give me a very loud <laughs> There are many times I ask this question of my students in class, okay? Tell me about your best teacher. Mm, uh, tell me about your worst teacher. Which one? <laughs> it's just sad, isn't it? Education isn't supposed to be about that. Think back to your best teacher. Do they make you excited to come to their classroom? Yes, every day you look forward to coming to that class. You want to learn from inside. It's not that you're forced to learn because I need to get paid or I have to do it to pass this class. You do it because you want to. Right? What is your connection with that teacher? It's a good one. Yes. Yes, it's a good one. There's a form of mutual respect, right? Because you feel good in that classroom. That's what you want to create with your children. It should be a place where they feel like, I, I trust this person, I love this person, I enjoy being with this person. She makes me excited or makes me excited to be here and to learn. Okay? You are igniting that energy, which exists in every single child. All right? It doesn't come out sometimes because they don't get the right teacher. Isn't it? Yeah? Have you ever felt that? I see it sometimes, maybe I cannot reflect correctly back on my own experience, but having children, I can see that I know that if he had the right teacher, she would bring this quality out in my child. I'm happy to say that my children are 14, that means they've had 13 years, uh, sorry, 12 years of school, and every year the teachers have been better and better. Okay, which means it's a sign of good times. That those teachers, I see them, they come home and they say, she made us do this, you know, she said this, I didn't know that was possible. And they get so excited by the ideas that the teachers discuss with them, all right? The activities they do with them, you need to do that with your children. Your children and your children, your own and your own in your classroom. Okay. All right. So how do you do that? Do you observe the children? We identify their needs, their interests, and we guide their energies. We are following the child. We we'll always come back to that. Okay? So she said, she, she wrote that the best preparation you can do for this job is to study yourself. I always tell uh, when I worked as a supervisor, 
when I've worked as a trainer, um, even when I go to school to do workshops, I always tell uh, the people that I'm working with that one of the best things you can do for yourself is buy yourself a journey. Okay? And at the end of the week, because we're very busy, we know teaching is challenging, it's you know, multitasking. At the end of the week, look back and write down what do you think went really well this week. Oh, I think this presentation of the uh, model animals was amazing. This language game I played was awesome. Okay? Write it down. Also write down what didn't work so well. What do I think didn't go as well as I planned? You know, this child was acting up, he was a little bit active, and the way I handled it, I could have done better. What could I have done better? I could have approached him with him this way. I could have sat with him on the side and chatted with him, whatever you feel. The minute you write those things down, and you make them tangible, okay, it kind of sinks into you. It gets embedded in you. Whether you ever come back and read that page again or not, trust me, it's going to make a difference. The good things will get repeated in some way and not time. The not so good things will slowly disappear and you make sure they don't happen. You do know it is studied and everybody knows this, that some of the most successful people today, billionaires and people who own huge companies and things like that, they all journal. Okay, how many of you journal? Anybody? It's an amazing habit. Okay, so it's one of the good things to cultivate. It leads to success. All right? 